In tonight's episode of Real Twisted Tales. I am going to tell the story of Oksana Malaya, who is also known as the feral child and a dog girl of the Ukraine. Oksana came to the world's attention when it was discovered that due to neglect, she wasn't raised by her parents, but a pack of dogs that lived on her land. Here at Real Twisted Tales, we regularly tell stories involving gruesome and horrifying murders, and you'll quickly see Oksana's story has none of this. It is, however, more than a little messed up, and it's almost unbelievable. When researching this tale for you, I try to imagine being Oksana, living like she lived, but I just can't get my imagination to stretch that far. Seriously, tonight's story that I will share with you, it's madness. And I have to wonder how, in our lifetimes, was she ever allowed to grow up the way that she did? And I want to know, after you've heard this story, could you imagine living like this? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Researching this incredible story, I felt I needed to get a sense of not just Oksana's world, but the wider world during this time. Oksana was born in what is now the Ukraine, but back then, in 1983, the Ukraine was firmly behind the Iron Curtain and part of the USSR. And Oksana grew up in a world of control and lack of freedom of movement. And because of that struggle, Oksana's parents struggled to do their jobs correctly, which was to bring up their daughter properly. As their poverty grew, Oksana's parents turned to the bottle for comfort, resulting in poor three-year-old Oksana suffering extreme neglect. In today's day and age, we would hope that there would be intervention for a child and help would come. But it was not the case in remote Ukraine during the mid-1980s. On one evening when Oksana's parents were on a particularly drunken bender, Oksana said or did something wrong. What that is, no one knows but I suspect it was something that would very likely be normal for a three-year-old to say or do. At that age, children push boundaries. They are learning their place in a world, and as frustrating as that can be, a parent, in my opinion, should take deep breaths and understand it's completely natural. But her parents didn't. They couldn't cope, and her father actually threw her out of the house, leaving her to fend for herself. Now ordinarily, a three-year-old being left outside on the edge of the forest to fend for themselves would likely result in that child's death. But not Exana, for help came. Help came in the shape of a four-legged companion. A dog is deemed to be man's best friend, but not in this case. In this case, a dog became a mentor, a protector. Man's best friend became a child's adoptive parent. Oksana's parents didn't come for their little girl that night. They likely passed out in a drunken stupor. And let's just pause there for a moment. Whilst they drank and argued and slept in a the warmth, their three-year-old child, their toddler, was outside facing the harsh, cold, unforgiving night alone. I don't need to say this out loud, but I will anyway. What her parents did is so cruel and unforgivable. But thankfully, this story isn't one of a little girl dying due to neglect. It's about a three-year-old finding a new home. Seeing the toddler alone and frightened, crying due to the cold and fear as night took hold, the dogs that Oksana's parents had living in the kennels took her in. I don't think for a second they came and physically collected her, in the same way the wolves did in the Jungle Book. But being around those dogs her whole short, neglected life, Oksana would have been comfortable with them and likely went to them for some comfort. And that night, as a cold crept in, Oksana huddled together with the dogs, keeping warm from their body heat and fur, and she made it through the night. Now you would expect that her parents would wake up the next day and realise in what they had done, they would try and find Oksana, bring her home and make sure she was alright. But they didn't. They continued to live in their warped, twisted little world, and Oksana continued to stay with the dogs. Day after day and night after night, poor three-year-old Oksana stayed with the dogs. And being her formative years, the years where we as humans do most of our growing and learning, the impact of only having dogs as her guide to the world and how she interacted with it, Oksana began to change. The first thing to suffer was her limited toddler vocabulary. 
At three, we have between two and 500 words in our vocabulary. By four, that shot up to over 1,500, maybe as many as 2,000. By five, it's 10,000 words. And this happens because we are learning at an accelerated rate. But with no one speaking around her, and the only communication she was surrounded by was the barks and growls and whimpers of dogs, Oksana regressed until her vocabulary was reduced to only these sounds. Her ability to communicate with another human was gone. At some point during this, Oksana's mother left and didn't take her with her leaving her at home with just their father, and neither parent tried to help, neither parent tried to change, they didn't even care. Over the course of time Oksana lived with the dogs, she completely changed, due to her primary source of stimulation and nurturing. Oksana ate just like the dogs did, by putting her face into the food. She didn't use her hands to pick up things, she even walked on all fours and barked. And this is tricky to truly get my head around. And being so focused on what the little girl became, I almost glossed over one startling and terrible fact. The dogs were still being fed, which meant Oksana's father was still feeding them, which meant he would see his daughter with the dogs becoming feral and still did f***ing nothing about it. When I was researching this story, I kept waiting to read that Oksana's father realised what he was doing was wrong and that he would intervene. Or that her mother came back and saved the little girl. But they didn't. And Oksana stayed with the dogs all the way through the harsh Ukrainian winter. And then the following spring, summer and the autumn marked a whole year living with the dogs. I kept thinking any day now, any moment now, her parents would step in. But still, even after the anniversary of her being cast out, they didn't come. Help did eventually come though, when local social services got wind that there might be a little girl subjected to neglect. Now remember, Oksana was born in 83. She was three when she was cast out, meaning it was 1986 when that happened. And the year social services turned up, 1991. That's right. Oksana had lived with a pack of dogs for five whole years. When she was discovered, social services were shocked to find her as she was. Five years of living with a pack of dogs meant that the now eight-year-old girl was entirely feral. And so weary to humans, so much so, that when they tried to step in, Oksana growled at them. In fact, her pack family weren't keen for her to be taken. She was now one of their own, and it took some effort to remove the young girl. Once the story broke, the Ukrainian and world media swept in, labelling her the, in my opinion, rather unkind title of the dog girl. Oksana was taken into protective foster accommodation, where she was subjected to a lot of tests and examinations to see how she was both physically and psychologically. Physically, besides the way she moved on all fours and shook when she was wet, Oksana was seemingly fine from her life outside with the dogs. Psychologically, the same couldn't be said. It's worth noting that when the doctors were examining Yonoxana, they recorded the sound of her barking, and it was described as not a human pretending to bark, but a real bark. Living through her formative years with the pack, Oxana's vocal cords had morphed to mimic the actual sound of a dog barking. It was as if Oxana had literally become the dog girl she was branded as in the media. Once Oksana had been tested, she was transferred to a psychological unit so they could continue to monitor and support the confused girl. I feel for Oksana. After being cast aside, she miraculously found a way to live. And that way, whether it was right or wrong, became all she knew. Now, I believed it was right to intervene, but for her, it must have felt like she was being ripped away from her family, her identity, for the second time in her short life. Oksana struggled to unlearn her ways and was placed in a psychological unit where she still lives today. At age 38, she has learned to control her dog-like impulses. She no longer walks on all fours and she has developed a limited Ukrainian vocabulary. She helps on a farm working with animals and she has since seen her father once more. But sadly, due to her early years and a life she had to learn, it is unlikely Oksana will ever leave a normal life. And I wonder what kind of woman Oksana would have become if she was shown more compassion and kindness from her biological family. I also wonder what kind of adult she would have become 
if she wasn't ever found. It makes you think, doesn't it? Hi everyone! Thanks for watching our video of the dog girl of the Ukraine. If you liked it, then please consider leaving a comment below. We read all of them and we try to reply to as many as we can. If you really liked it, then please subscribe to our channel as it will really help us out. Good night and keep safe. Coming up in the next episode of Real Twisted Tales, we meet Anthony Moskvin, who dug up the dead bodies of 26 young Russian girls, mummified their bodies, dressed them, and kept them in his home as his children. This story is incredibly twisted. It's also incredibly sad.